this is Jenny and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be talking about how I've been since um, finishing the Cure Your Emetophobia and Thrive program and I'll also be talking to you about how my trip to the UK went. So it's been officially I think seven months now since I've finished the uh, program and uh, all I can say is that I feel really good and I feel like I'm thriving every single day. Um, I can't actually put into words how much I've changed since seven months ago when I first started the course and how I am right now. I just feel like a totally different person and I just feel alive, just totally alive. And um, just to give you a perspective of how much I've changed, um, normally when I go back and review the book, I will just go back to the important chapters that I feel like um, I need to reread again or I need to re-understand. Um, I never actually go back and read the things that I've written because there are exercises in here that ask you questions and um, I usually just wrote everything down in the book. So um, on chapter one, belief systems, there's actually a question. It's question number two and it asks, what limiting belief systems do you have? And um, I actually read it and I felt really, really emotional because I couldn't believe what state of mind I was in at that time that made me write down these really really limiting beliefs um, because they are totally not something that I would ever write down now and it just struck something in me I just really realized how much I've changed um, some of these were I won't succeed in beating my phobia I'll never be able to travel to the UK um, things that were so major in my life that I thought would never ever be able to happen and uh, now I've just basically done all of those and I cannot believe it, I really sincerely cannot believe it but I do have to say that um, people who you know have created this fear um, and metaphobes we don't give ourselves enough credit for it so I'd just like to say right now to myself well done <laughs> because it was a lot of work um, and it was you know constantly reminding yourself and motivating yourself so I'm really proud of myself and I'd just like to thank Lucy and Rob again because I just couldn't have done it without you so um, I'd just like to kind of talk about um, how I've been doing these past seven months since I finished the um, book and just give you a kind of um, a few pointers for anyone out there who um, you know wants to know how I've been getting on, how I've been reviewing, and things like that. Um, so after I posted my video, uh, my testimonial, I had some really good feedback back, and I have a few people kind of, um, you know, asking me questions and things, and that's, you know, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your kind comments. Um, so yeah, as you know, I've been doing really good these past seven months. I have been reviewing the book, I would say, once every two months. Um, so. First of all, if I tell you right from the start, um, after I finished a book, um, I gave myself about a week's break because the, the, six, the six weeks with Lucy, my Thrive Consultant, were pretty intense for me. Um, you know, I, I felt like I kind of rapidly went through the book with her, um, I was going really, doing really well and I just needed to give myself a bit of a break. So I gave myself a week's break and then I went straight back into the book because in chapter 14 Rob actually does say that you should go back and review just in case you've missed any chapters out or you want to kind of reabsorb anything, any important points that you feel um, would make a difference to, you know, trying to cure yourself. So I did go straight back into it. I did another six weeks of reviewing and all the sticky notepads that I uh, used to write down all the important points, I still kept in my room. So I didn't take any of them out. I didn't take any of them down. I still had all of them. Um, I even took, um, you know, pictures with my phone of some of the important points in here just so that I could look at them. Um, if any time I felt not very confident in a certain place at a certain time. And all of that really helped, really, really helped me throughout the seven months. When I first started the course with Lucy, I, um, you know, did very small things first. So because I had social anxiety, I started out, um, you know, just, you know, baby steps. So I first started out um, going to the cinema 
which was a pretty normal thing to do and uh, that was really good and then I started challenging myself further by going up a mountain which you might have seen in one of the videos that I did and that was um, a really big thing for me because you know I live in Thailand I live in Chiang Mai where it's very mountainous and um, going up a mountain where the temples are is something very common to do and I never 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 did that so doing that was a really big step for me and once I did it and it was great I just felt like I could challenge myself more and more and more and the big, the absolutely massively big thing that I wanted to do was go to the UK because ever since I've been here I have never been back 12 years I think and so I knew, I just knew that I had to do that if I could do that I could do anything and it was such a big vocal point for me and um, you know I did take seven months after that to really build up my confidence to be able to do that thing and I just knew that you know I kept reading the book I kept reviewing I felt confident you know I was going out more I went to the cinema more didn't mind drinking I just really tried to challenge myself as much as I could just to build up my confidence and those very small things kind of accumulated into like a very big ball of confidence you could say for me to be able to finally decide okay I'm doing this I'm going to the UK so I think on July I went to the airport and I finally decided that I was going to buy tickets to the UK now can I just say that when I was doing this I kinda kept my frame of mind 50-50 so in a way 50% of me was confident 50% of me was actually um, worrying and I know Rob and Lucy probably don't want to hear me saying this but I have to I just have to tell you the truth I wasn't worrying it's such a big 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 thing for me to do that and what I did was you know I went back into the book obviously and uh, you know obsessive the obsessive personalities perfectionist personalities that's just me so I read it and I understood it and what I did was I kind of kept that 50% frame of mind very very loose I was worrying about it but I ignored it so I kind of was like I'm going to go and I don't know what's going to happen, something bad might happen, I don't really care. I didn't really want to worry myself, I didn't want to obsess about it, I just kept it very, very floaty and up in the air. So I took the um, one hour plane ride from Chiang Mai to the capital Bangkok and I said to myself when I went to Chiang Mai airport that this one hour plane ride is going to be the ride where I know whether or not I'm going to be able to cope or not. Um, so I went onto the plane um, for what was, I think, uh, one of the worst, worst plane rides I've ever had. Um, there was turbulence, um, it was raining, uh, it was crammed full of people in a very small plane. And, you know, the minute I was sitting in there, the minute the plane took off, um, Chris, then you can hear a plane now, very sorry about that. Um, I, I automatically felt the anxiety rising, I tried to calm myself down, I tried to really focus on myself, motivate myself, I, I kept talking to myself, um, not out loud obviously, but you know, in my mind, you know, giving myself motivation that I can do this, I can endure this, if something bad happens, if I'm sick, if I'm sick right here, I really don't care, I can handle this, you know, no matter what, I mean, I'm not, you know, in England yet, I'm, I'm still in Thailand, I'll be able to handle the situation. So I got off the plane and I was very nauseous, I was dizzy, I hadn't been on a plane for so long um, and I was feeling not very confident actually. Um, I'm going to be totally honest, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. So um, I didn't throw up or anything, um, I was just very dizzy. Um, I managed to be able to buy some stuff to eat there and I sat down and you know, it wasn't for a couple of hours um, that my next flight so I just had to really, really put myself in a state of mind where I was just very confident and in control even though I knew that I wouldn't be able to be in control if that did actually happen but it did not matter because it's a normal bodily function so I called my mum told her how I was feeling um, she doesn't know I have a metaphobia so she you know gave me the confidence that she could and I phoned my boyfriend and I told him and he knows I have a metaphobia and it was really good that he was able to read the, um, the chapter in here for the significant other so he understood um, what he had to do, what he had to say to me, and he told me basically right off the bat, if you don't do this, all the stuff that you've been through, you know, out of these eight, nine months is going to be totally worthless. And it really hit me, and I thought, he's right, I have to do this, I have to challenge myself, no matter how hard this is, if I don't do this, 
that's it because this is the biggest thing that I want to do. I knew I knew that I wouldn't be able to start my life properly if I didn't go back to England because I've always had this very emotional connection with it. Um, you know, being taken away um, from where I was born from quite a critical age in your life when you're, you know, starting to become a teenager. So I knew I just had to go back. So after I kind of psyched myself up again, I got onto the flight, the 12 hour non-stop flight from Bangkok to London and um, to my surprise it was actually really, really okay. I was not sick, um, I did feel a bit dizzy, but that was because I guess I haven't been on a plane for a very long time. Um, I was very lucky to get a seat where um, there was nobody in the middle, so it was a man, a, an empty seat and me on the end, and um, so I was able to stretch, able to sleep. Um, I kind of uh, wore myself out, just kind of, you know, building the anxiety up, so I managed to sleep on the plane, I managed to eat properly, and um, I didn't feel sick at all, I wasn't actually even thinking about it once I actually got on the plane and things started to go, because I was so excited to get to London, and um, when we finally arrived and the captain said, you know, you know, if you look below out of the window, you can see Big Ben, and I was just, I was, I felt like, it was an incredible feeling, I can't even explain to you how unbelievable it felt to actually finally, 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 finally get to where I wanted to get to. And uh, the plane landed, immediately when the plane landed, it did feel a bit queasy, but it was because I didn't eat anything. So um, I landed, got my bags, met up with my brother and sister after not seeing them for about 12 years or more actually. Um, was really emotional but so good to see them and and then that was it I got in the car and I was fine I wasn't feeling anxious I wasn't feeling um, scared I wasn't feeling um, any signs of you know um, uh, behavior behavioral you know things that you do when you when you're starting to feel anxious um, regarding emetophobia I wasn't like cleaning my hands I wasn't looking for the toilets and stuff I was just really happy to be there and I could not believe it, like I cannot even tell you it felt like I won the lottery, it really did, it was amazing. So the house was eerily quiet and um, I had a lot of time to myself, you know, to think and to ponder and the realisation that I was there by myself without anyone there knowing that I had a metaphobia, um, you know, I wasn't, it was a new place, I didn't know what to do, that happened. Um, you know, just the fact that I'd have to fend for myself and um, how terrible it would be if I was just going to be like throwing up everywhere and be in a state, that actually really got to me for the first three days and um, this is no lie, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, I actually did call my boyfriend and tell him that I, I don't think I could, I could do it anymore. I wanted to go back, I wanted to go back that day, so I wanted to go back, I wanted to go back that day, um, I was seriously thinking of just going to the airport, booking another ticket back, I was not in a good state of mind, I was not feeling confident and obviously that's understandable because I haven't, I haven't been there for so long. It's a completely new place and that kind of anxiety that I just kind of let float in the air, it was all starting to hit me now because I just, did, I just ignored it for so long when I knew it was there, when maybe I should have addressed the problem. But then, you know, my boyfriend was, you know, amazing um, and I'm very lucky that he, you know, understood the problem and was able to motivate me in the correct way. He told me again that, you know, I need to stay strong, that it's just something that I've created and I also told myself that many, many times, all the time, that it's just something that I created, I need to just let that go and enjoy myself because I'm here now, I've got, I've come this far, I cannot just let it all go, it's going to be a waste of time, I need to prove to everyone, I need to prove to you, you know, the people who are, you know, beginning the course now, that it's possible, you can achieve your dreams, so, I stuck it out, I motivated myself to the extreme, and I bought the book as well, so I was, you know, reading it, really going through all the things I was struggling with, and then after three days, after those three pretty bad days, I was absolutely fine. I was absolutely fine, I was going out, I was um, meeting up with people again, I was um, eating all the things I wanted to eat, I was even drinking, um, that's totally not me at all, I just completely let everything go. I was a completely new and different person. Um, at the end of the third week I felt like I could literally just stay there, I felt like I was so in tune with everything, I felt so confident. So on the way back, um, nothing happened, I was totally fine, I was a bit anxious but I managed to um, uh, overcome it 
and um, I landed here and it was just amazing. The whole experience was simply amazing. I can't, I can't, I've never felt like I've achieved something so great, you know, than, than what I've achieved so far um, by going there and it was, I just, I have no words actually to describe how proud I am of myself and how, and how thankful I am for the flight program because without it this would never have happened and I would probably just be stuck somewhere you know like how I was seven months ago so um, I basically just to summarize it up I just want to say it was hard and it is it might possibly be hard for any one of you out there who is completing the program and is you know really challenging yourself to do something incredibly difficult um, but it's not impossible you can do it and um, if you just put your mind to it, if you keep motivating yourself, and that is so important, you know, to be around people who motivate you, to motivate yourself, to constantly keep reviewing and understanding yourself so that you can, you know, fix, fix kind of the way that you think um, all the time, wherever you are. And that is really, really important, you know, just to keep sticking at it and to not, you know, let go of all the things that you, you know, the skills that you already have, these new skills that you've created. Just never let them go and always believe that you can do it because you definitely can do it. Yeah, I'm not actually scared to do anything, you know, really major now because I don't think you can get more major than going on a plane um, to a country by yourself and, you know, being there by yourself for all those weeks. So I'm so glad that I managed to do it. And you just have to push yourself. I mean, I know it sounds horrible, you know, kind of forcing yourself. But in a way, the more you challenge yourself, the more you will gain confidence. So just want to say um, now to um, everyone who is you know um, starting the book who's you know midway who's finished the book um, anyone who's feeling uh, unconfident or somebody who um, has finished the book and are thriving just you know whatever you do just keep remembering to yourself that this thing that you have it's just um, something that you've created yourself and you cannot create Right, so I think I've spoken enough now about my experiences. Um, please feel free to leave me any questions or comments down below um, and I'll be very happy to answer them. And I just want to say um, once again thank you to everyone who's um, been supporting me, uh, watching the videos, um, giving me really good feedback. Um, good luck to anyone out there who's starting the Thrive program, who's in the middle of it, who's about to finish it. Um, and also thank you once again to Lucy and Rob who um, I didn't actually get a chance to meet in England um, I think you know our schedules just didn't you know work out but I'm sure in the future I'll be able to meet them uh, one day so uh, yeah once again thank you and um, hoping to make um, more videos in the future and um, yeah see you soon